good morning welcome to my channel um, wherever you are in the world I'm coming to you from beautiful Bonaire in the Dutch Caribbean where I have my small little pottery studio and right here this is the lid of my kiln and I have just opened it to um, cool it a little bit further when I came in this morning it was 57 degrees centigrade so that was still a little bit warm it's still warm but nonetheless I'm going to share with you um, uh, my latest glaze firing I have two experiments in here and I have some scrofito in here I have some interactive pigments in here you will see um, as we go along but first things first my cones I put the cones on the top shelf this time because of space and I know my kiln fires hotter in the bottom than it does on top and it's well half a cone so uh, this is cone five and this is six well five is all the way over so it's past five and six is starting to bend so on the top I have cone five and a half which means I will probably have a cone six on the bottom but I didn't have room for us put cones in safely without touching any of my pots so I don't have any cones down below but I know my kiln by now so it'll probably be around six at the, at the, at the bottom let's start with two small things I made I, one or two videos before I showed you these as well but they already sold so I made only two this time two new shot glasses with fishes slip trailed and the glaze for those who are interested is Mako Norse Blue. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> I have some scrofito. I love making these small little butt vases. Uh, again, I sold a few last week or two weeks ago. And these are also like the shot glasses, perfect kiln fill fillers. This is with a slip that I make myself with mason stains. I have no idea which ones and um, how much of each, each. There are two or three mason stains in my slip. With some daisies. Sort of, kind of. Dahlias, maybe. I am again making uh, Tillandsia hangers, air plant hangers. And this is a sea urchin ish shape. Um, on the inside there's a little loop from clay from which you can hang your talansia so that it might then look like uh, a jellyfish. This is for those who are interested. Um, Georgie's interactive pigment and it's the sand and surf with the spectrum pearl white over it very pretty it has green it has pearlescent white it has yellow it's very nice I really really like the interactive pigments now for my experiment yeah I already had my notes here because uh, oh, maybe, maybe you like to see that I'm making little plates and this is one of them and this is the other one I made two small plates as an experiment because um, I saw a video by Steve Bouton he's a potter in England United Kingdom England he's amazing he makes totally different work than I do but it's incredible and um, he also fires differently he fires gas cone 10 nothing compared with cone 6 electric but he made these big, big landscape platters. And I thought, I want to try that. I'm going to make a landscape platter. But first try it small, you, you never know. And I thought I will do two with the same colored glazes, but with one difference, which, will, which is um, the first layer. So I will show them both. And I don't need my notes because I can tell which one is which. Let me show you. Of course, inspired by Bonaire, 
for those of you who don't know, Bonaire um, has a lot of salt, very beautiful salt. And um, we have these triangular mountains of salt uh, on the south coast. So these two are my first experiments. I'm very happy with it, although the pink is not where it should be yet. That's not the pink of the pink water. We have pink water, but it's not that pink. And the white of the salt mountains is not quite there yet, but yeah, for a first experiment, I'm very, very pleased. Um, this one has two layers of pearl white on first, and then all the glazes, which I will sh uh, uh, share with you in a second. This one did not have that pearl white underneath. So there's a big difference. I personally like this better than that, um, but I have to work out the pink. Maybe I have to order a different pink or make a different pink. I'm not sure yet, but the other glazes are very, very pretty and I will share them with you. So they are the same, the glazes, except that this one has two layers of pearl white underneath. So I'll share with you. Right here on the bottom, Mako Norse Blue with my own glaze that I call Shallow Waters. It's made with Mason Stained Bermuda. There is a little stripe of Mako Sandstone, Raspberry Mist, Sandstone, Raspberry Mist. This is Amaco's White, which is trailed. That's you can see the stripes, I think. I maybe should have colored it in completely because the pearl white doesn't, on top, doesn't get really white. And this is also Mako's Norse Blue. And I have put a little trailing with pearl white along those edges as well. Yeah, this is good. I like it. This is this. Uh, very good for a first experiment. Oh, sorry, I have to take a look at this one again. I love this. This is so pretty. And I love the sandstone and, and the moist blue bit on top of the pearl white. My Bermuda shallow waters glaze is gorgeous. Um, any tips on a pink that looks like the pink water on there? We'll see. We'll continue this experiment. So, now I need to take off the shelf. And I think this is still a bit hot. Well, it's okay. More bud vases. Of course, in Scarafito. This is Amaco's Amethyst underglaze. With just a clear glaze on top. All carved, Scarafito. Those who have seen my videos and my work before, you know, I'm addicted to Scravito. Et voilà, there's another one. <sighs> Which one is this? I think this is my own slip. I'm not sure. A beautiful blue. 
And then I have two cups. This is on my dark clay. Opulence Black and Pearl White by Spectrum. It gives you whites, blues, pinks and purples. Look. Very nice. There's his brother. Black on the inside. Dark clay. Yeah. These just always work. That Optimus Black is stable. Uh, so if you layer a glaze on top. So far so good. They work. I have a bowl from one of my students. This is also interactive pigments. Take off the aluminum hydrate. Interactive pigment. I don't remember exactly which, which one. I think it's the same as the other one. Sand and Surf and then Pearl White. And there's some posts. And another kill shelf. Yes, it's getting hot. Ooh. Ooh. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, I think I made a little mistake. Oh, oh gosh. Whee. Hot, hot. Ah, oh, shoot. Here is a small bird feeder. In a combination I like very much. Oh, I have a little bit of pinhole. Oh no, it's okay. I, I thought I thought the the holes were um, filled in with glaze, but they're not. They're good. This is Norse blue on top, spectrum green stone, and yellow ore. I like this sort of landscapish look as well, and I like the the uh, combination of matte and glossy. I hope you can see that. The yellow ore is matte and the rest is glossy. For our feathered friends, I have another one for our feathered friends. I have a cookie on there. Here is another bird feeder, different shape, different kind. This is where you put your, your rope through. And this will hang like that. This is the beautiful um, Pearl White by Spectrum on top of Turquoise Blue Underglaze by Amico. Absolutely beautiful. Then there he is. Uh, I have a commission for some lamps. Or lamps, the. Oh, I keep popping out. <laughs> well, I have a commission for some lamps or shades. Um, my, my customer is going to do the uh, electrical things himself. One is just my dark clay, no glaze. It's a beautiful brown, uh, which he liked very much. So this is one of the prototypes. Um, the final ones will probably be a little bit bigger. And I also have made one in my white clay and I was supposed to put a certain glaze on it and I think I dipped it in the wrong bucket. Yeah, <laughs> I had my glazes mixed up, oh my goodness. Well, it's not that bad. This is, again, the same kind of lampshade. Um, this glaze is Calico. By opulence which is pretty it's brownish with some purple or pink hues it's it's a beautiful glaze but it's not what he wanted <laughs> he wanted the antique iron I just dipped it in the wrong bucket huh I guess I'm going to have to make another one uh, who knows maybe he likes this better maybe I'm lucky and, uh, well, that's it. That's my 50 liter kiln emptied out. 
I absolutely love this experiment. I'll be making more of these and then eventually I will be making big, bigger ones. I love those. Um, can you see? Yeah. Right here, there are new Strofito items that are dried. These will be salt and pepper shakers. This will be bright turquoise after it's fired. It's now um, bone dry, so it's not fired yet. I have one in a very dark blue. This will be royal blue, very dark after it's fired. Of course, Scrafito, yeah, I, I can't help myself. There are some more Scrafito mugs on the way. This will be black and white with fishes. Oh. This one will be also black and white but with turtles. And these all are going to be bisque fired somewhere, maybe over the weekend. Um, I need a little bit more to fill the kiln and I'm working on that. This will be one of those multicolored with um, turtles. Um, my um, refrigerator, <laughs> Jimmy, he's called Jimmy, is uh, almost full. Things are drying slowly as soon as they are dried. We'll be doing another bisque firing and another glaze firing. So I expect to have another kiln opening for you. Maybe in a week, maybe a little later. Uh, in the meantime, happy creating, enjoy. And uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them. Write me something in the comments, if, something you would like to know. Um, I sell my work through Facebook. I'll put a link down below um, where you can see my Facebook page. I share more on my Facebook page and on my Instagram with, you know, pictures from behind the scenes and before and after shots of pots and I will also put a link in there if I can to Steve Bouton's channel uh, if you want to see what he's up to in England. Um, I say goodbye and I see you in the next video. Bye bye!